I'm Sienna and today in Victoria we held the Achievements and Challenges Seminar hosted by the Australian Council for Student Voice. Um, it was an incredible event, it was so amazing to hear everybody's presentations and the incredible questions that the audience had for them as well. Um, we did attempt to film the entire thing for you but unfortunately the camera did cut out part way through but we've put together some of the best parts of today and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> My name is Oak, I use PDA pronouns, and I'm a member of the SRC Student Executive Advisory Committee, a group of 15 students representing the voice of all school age students across Victoria. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that today we are meeting on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri people. I want to acknowledge Elders past and present and ask you to all reflect on the fact that the sovereignty of this country was never ceded and a treaty never reached. As someone passionate about education, and I think this is particularly important to learn more about and reflect upon these challenging times for our First Nations people. I'd like to ask that everyone stay safe and do your best to show support and allyship to First Nations people now and into the future. So as I said, I'm a member of the Student Executive Advisory Committee for the SRC. The SRC, or the Student um, the Victorian Student Representative Council is a not-for-profit organisation created by students for students. Our aim is to empower all students to be valued in every aspect of their education, particularly in education policy. As an organisation, the SRC is unique because we are led by a team of 15 secondary school stage students. The Student Executive Advisory Committee that makes decisions collectively with a group of six adults, our board of trustees, about how big the SRC operates and what programs it offers and how it hears from students about what changes need to be made in education. A team of staff members then put these decisions into action with consistent advice from the Student Executive Advisory Committee to ensure that all of the work we do is aligned with our core mission, vision and values. The SRC's vision is education that is flexible, relevant and includes all students in all decisions. To work towards this vision, the SRC's mission is to stand with and for students to elevate their voices to be heard at all levels of decision making. From within their schools and communities to the highest levels in the Department of Education. We strive to be student-centered, inclusive, innovative and, mainly, and maintain strong values in learning and growth, collabor collaboration, integrity and respect for every student. Excuse me. Um, it's really lovely to be here today. Uh, thank you, Sienna, and to the Australian Council for Student Voice for having us. This has been a really great morning, um, and I've um, really honoured to be welcomed here today to speak to you all. Uh, so my name is Julia, and I'm using her pronouns, and I'm the CEO at the SRC, or the Victorian Student Representative Council. And before I start, I'd also like to acknowledge um, the Wurundjeri Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose land we are gathered here today, uh, acknowledging the elders past and present, and acknowledging that sovereignty has never been ceded. This always was, and always will be our national land. <laughs> so, as the CEO, I have one of the best jobs of all, I guess I'll say in particular, but I will be of any job. Uh, I get to work really closely with our Student Executive Advisory Committee. Uh, and our staff team to implement their vision and ensure Victoria has the best education system for all students. But one of the biggest challenges we really face in our work is helping people understand what student voice actually looks like in practice. Now, based on what I've heard today, I feel like maybe I've pitched into the wrong room. <laughs> it seems like everybody's got a really good handle of it. Um, but we really wanted to unpack, I guess, Term student voice and what it actually means, and what is it that is challenging for us to get across to support other people to understand it, um, and what makes it challenging for others to understand. It is such a really big term, big, broad, vague student voice, and sometimes the true meaning gets lost in the work we do. To us, it makes sense to assume that student voice is actually all about listening to students which is an important part of student voice, but it's only one part of it. 
it's not old. It's not the future. In fact, student voice is about much more than listening. Moving beyond the moment where students are invited to share their thoughts and ideas, genuine student voice must be enabled and supported by the system, the system, the education system, the school environment, ensuring all students are actively involved in decision making related to their education. So what does this mean? Good student voice means adults work together with students to understand their perspectives and commit to respecting them even when they're hard for us to hear. Good student voice is when students set the agenda as opposed to being invited to contribute to predetermined projects, initiatives or discussions. Good student voice is when students are recognised for their expertise and the unique contributions they bring to any and every discussion about education. Good student voice means that adults must relinquish power. Um, educators, policy makers and government hold power in decision making and agenda setting and we need to start getting better at providing the space for students to step into that. There are many examples of genuine student voice happening all around us, as we've heard today. And BSRC does work closely with schools and government to support everyone to do this well. But we also have a responsibility to ensure we're doing it ourselves. And we are honouring our own values by maintaining genuine student voice practices across all of our work. So, with that in mind, I'll hand back to Oak now to show a bit more about his experience with student voice and what it's like being on the community. Um, I have always loved helping people, and one of the best ways I found to do that was through student voice work. Um, I started having an interest in advocacy in general um, when I was in primary school. The uh, main motivator for that was I wanted to make my school a better correct place for my younger brother, who would be attending in the years. Um, and that's continued to be a driving factor for my advocacy work. I was my class's student representative um, in primary school, which I know some of you here are. Um, a role which I took on with much enthusiasm, and when going to high school, I started being more and more passionate about speaking out against discrimination and bullying, so I set my mind on advocacy. A major moment of change for me was last year when I went to the Yakvik Reshape Your Future conference. My school was given free tickets, and I was offered one. Um, at this point, I was already on my school's SRC, um, but I had the urge and growing desire to do more. So this conference spoke about ways I could advocate for students and what that meant, which is when I decided I would nominate the SRC Student Advisory Committee. Um, and much to my surprise, I was elected. I was really excited to talk on issues such as neurodivergent inclusion and general acceptance in the classroom, something that has impacted me and my younger brother to this day. I've loved being on the executive committee and I've had opportunities to comment on a range of issues, including issues in LGBTQIA plus students face at school. I've commented on these issues through the media. One moment was when I advocated for inclusive education, when there were calls from the Presbyterian Church to remove LGBT plus students from positions of school leadership. This was a topic I was extremely passionate about and because of my position, I was able to lend my voice to the fight and ensure this kind of discrimination stopped. I am also on the Department of Education's LGBTQ plus reference group as one of two students among a sea of high-level decision-making professionals from the government and not-for-profit sectors, including the Victorian Commissioner for LGBT plus communities, Todd. I do not have to that last name. <laughs> um, I probably should. This group discusses some pressing topics that are, that are impacting LGBT plus students in Victoria. It is through these opportunities and the many others I have been offered in my role in the BKSLC Executive Committee that I am making the actual change that directly affects the people I care about. This hasn't been without its challenges though. A main barrier for students is um, being heard and taken seriously by adults, um, which I know we have some amazing people in this room who are ready to support us. Um, it can certainly be challenging talking to people older than me. Um, despite this being an amazing opportunity, it is a daunting position um, to take on because I have always been 
I have always been worried about being a younger person. People are less likely to take on what I have to say. It is through continuing to raise my voice and the voices of others that people will listen. And I can say from my own experience that people really are starting to listen, and that is amazing. Big SRC and the work of the Student Executive Committee continues to empower students and amplify their voices. They can have a say in the things that they are passionate about and directly impact them. Thank you. Um, I think the main thing, no matter where you are, is passion and perseverance. Because even if you're in a community that doesn't have an established student voice group, you can be that person to start getting that word out that this is something I'm passionate about. You need to spread the love that you have for advocacy because it is work of love, in my opinion. Um, it's hard work, but I do it because I love it, and I do it because. I love my little brother, I do it because I love my community and I want to better that community and the main thing is to hold on to that passion and that um, joy that you can get out of this work. Yes. Um, this is another question to Oda, sorry. <laughs> what do you like about being the new XRC? Um, I can see the change that's happening and I can help more people because like I said I am passionate about helping and I can leave something behind for the people that come after me in the years below me. I can help my friends. I can just help my community. I, again, I love people. Um, I love helping people. And I love being able to also talk about things um, and experiences that have affected me. For example, um, I'm neurodivergent, so I struggle with things in the classroom sometimes, and not many people have that perspective, so I can bring that perspective to help other people like me. Yeah, still a question for you. <laughs> so, can you elaborate more about how you would define class from a young person's perspective? perspective? Because um, I'm also the representative of the humanities, like student association, and so our LGBT class is our focus and So I like to hear how can you differentiate that from like adults compared to like kids or teenagers. Um, could you be a bit more specific, please? Sorry. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, it's generally like how do you refer? How do you represent LGBTQIA identity um, from the younger people's like, Um, I think that our generation is a lot more open, um, and that's just how we've progressed. And I think that's an amazing thing. And I think um, I have an amazing school community that supports me. And um, I think that's really important to have just little things around like schools that can maybe say like um, safe space or like this is a community group such as my school has an LGBT plus Q and A group um, where younger people who are part of the community can ask older people and vice versa um, and really hear from other people understand them and support them and we welcome in our allies and they can ask us questions and we can ask them questions. We started a program to get LGBT plus books into the library where each of them would have a rainbow heart sticker in the back of the book. So you can open up the book and in the back of the book if you saw the rainbow heart sticker it had LGBT plus themes. Um, we also have resources in our library that um, are things like transition um, resources, helpline resources, teachers who are passionate about this and will talk to you. Does that answer your question? I guess so. Okay, thanks. This question is from one of the comments. Um, one of the two who can answer it. Um, what's your favorite change you think that's, or the best change that's happened over how you, when you've been the student at class? A lot has happened. <laughs> Um, I've only been on for about a year, so I think some of the amazing things is we've reworked Congress a little bit, which is a big student voice effect. Um, Julie, is more familiar with some of the past achievements? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm actually new on the group, I started back in February, yeah. um, but yeah, I think 
in terms of the work that the organisation's done prior to them starting, some of the big wins um, that the team have achieved over many, many years of work and uh, include things like um, students needing to be on school councils now. So I think it's two positions on school councils. And what we mean by that is like the, the leadership council, not kind of the, represent, the student representative council. There's supposed to be two positions for students on each of those councils. Um, now, not all schools are aware of that, not all schools have implemented that. There are still ongoing challenges related to doing that. But that's a really incredible, um, I guess, opportunity for students to be engaged at a really, really the top level in their school around um, informing what happens next um, in the school environment and how they improve school. And it was a really amazing thing that the, the Department of Education, who we worked with really closely, um, were really supportive of that was something that may happen. Um, I think as well a lot of the work in mental health aspects and mental health and well-being and student mental health and well-beings and has been a recurring um, issue for young people uh, in primary and secondary school. We've been doing a lot of work in that space. The government's invested a lot of money in that space. And um, that's still ongoing. Lots of different mental health and well-being kind of programs happening in the school environment. Um, and that is one that uh, I guess the team at the SRC have worked alongside government and schools as much as they can because it's such an important area for students. Uh, just to say but when you're talking about before what good student voice looks like, who comes up with like those things? Like who comes up with what makes them good? Do you have an example? I think that student voice is flexible to the people who are the students at the time, and I think that's what makes good student voice. And I think. What we define as good student voice is the things that are flexible and can apply to everyone to get everyone's voice. Because student voice isn't just about the good kids or the people here or about what just one person wants. It's about all of us. It's student voice. So it needs to be flexible and apply to every single student. And I'll just add to that that I guess um, what what we keep reflecting on in our organisation and how we do student voice that we think is really important is that to Eric's point about how it's really important to sort of represent and engage with as diverse a group of students as possible, um, what that means is not everybody has the same amount of time or the same amount of interest or um, the same, uh, I guess, passion for the types of things that an organisation like ours works on. So we need to offer lots of different types of opportunities for students to get engaged in so that more students then might be able to find something suitable to them. So for example, the executive committee that Oak is on, it's quite a big time commitment um, and for a long period. It lasts for a whole year. Um, you have to give up your Saturdays pretty regularly to come and be part of the executive committee. And for a lot of students, you might play Saturday sport, you might have a casual job, like it's just not possible. You also have to be a secondary school student to be on the executive committee. So then it's our responsibility to go, okay, that's one opportunity. What else could we be doing within our organisation to get other students involved in our work? Um, so that could be through things like media engagement, um, it could be things like advocacy opportunities, it could be getting involved in delivering programs sometimes. Um, yeah, a whole range of things, and it's really important for us to keep reflecting internally on what we're doing to make sure that we are constantly tweaking and changing based on feedback from students. So I guess the only thing I'd add to Oak's um, comments as well is that who determines what good student voices? Students, right? They need to tell us, we need to be confident that they feel heard, that they feel safe, that they feel represented. Um, because if they don't feel that, that means we haven't done the job of giving up the power that we've got as adults to allow them to feel that and enter the space. Another question? 